Hello, my name is Judd White. This is the second video in a series where I'll be covering the fundamentals of C-sharp using Visual Studio 2010. In this video, I'll cover the anatomy of a code file, basically uh, what everything in this program.cs file means. My email is jwhite at cdtag.com. Feel free to write me there. My website is judsonwhite.com. On there you can see a little bit more about me, my resume, some open source projects I work on and stuff like that. And uh, all these videos we posted to judsonwhite.com slash learn. We last left off at our Hello World program and we looked at uh, our call to console.write line. So I'll just run this again real quick. And there it is. So let's look at the rest of the program. Uh, at the top we have a bunch of using statements. The syntax of a using statement is using followed by a namespace and a semicolon. Uh, these lines aren't actually code that gets executed, they're, they're hints for the compiler on how to resolve a class name uh, or other type. Um, every class in .NET lives inside of a namespace. Just below we can see our program class lives inside the hello world namespace. Uh, namespaces are used to organize classes and to allow classes with the same name to exist inside uh, different namespaces. For example, if I created a class called person and I reference someone else's code who also has a class called person, the compiler might get confused on which person class I wanted to use. But since the two person classes live in different namespaces, there's no confusion. I just specify uh, the namespace of the one I want to use. So let's hop back down to console. And let's right click it and go to definition. And inside this file, um, this is a, a generated kind of outline of the console class. Um, you can see the uh, some of the metadata that's associated with these. You can't actually see the code. If you wanted to see the code, you can get a tool called Reflector. But anyway, this shows you the outline, and inside this class, we see that it lives inside the uh, system namespace. We can also see the namespace by hovering over console. Uh, it shows class system.console. System.console is the fully qualified class name of what we just call console. And fully qualified means uh, the class name including the namespace. So back to our usings. Um, they're there just to save us typing. They're, they're technically optional, but you'll probably want to use them. So let's delete using system and see what happens. And uh, also, in case you're wondering how I delete a whole line, uh, it's shift delete. Uh, one thing to be aware of there is that it does copy that line to your clipboard, so if you have something else there, it will be overwritten. Okay, so console is now underlined in red, and let's hover over that. And it tells us that it does not exist in the current context, meaning it doesn't know how to resolve uh, this class console um, that we're trying to use. It doesn't even really know that it it's a class or, or what. So we can fix this by putting using system uh, back up at the top or we can use the fully qualified class name. So let's add system dot in front of console and everything here looks good. There's no more red lines and uh, let's see if it works. Okay, it works. As another example, if we start typing a namespace, for example, our namespace, hello world, and hit dot, we can see all the types that live inside this namespace. For our example, it's just program, so uh, let's try system instead. Okay, there's a, a lot of classes, and um, classes are indicated by the icon with the, the three boxes. Um, as well as uh, some sub namespaces. Let's find one. Here we go. Uh, and these are indicated by the curly braces. And there's a bunch of other types too. Um, there's a, a delegates and, and uh, interfaces and um, we'll get to those as well. So let's 
go down to uh, a namespace which lives uh, underneath namespaces. So if you notice at the top, we have using system dot collections dot generic, and you know collections is a sub uh, namespace of system, and generic is a sub namespace of system dot collections. So let's take a look at system dot XML and take a look in there. And uh, there's you know there's lots of stuff in here and you know really there's there's just a lot of uh, great um, generic code that's that's already written for you uh, inside the .NET framework. Okay so let's get rid of this and I want to put my console back the way it was. Now again I can uh, go up and add using system and everything will work. But uh, another way to do this is if you write a class name and uh, you don't have the the appropriate using and you, and you don't want to use the fully qualified class name just move your cursor down there you're gonna get a little uh, purple or blue uh, small box here and just hover over that and now you get this uh, this menu so click on the menu and uh, you have an option you can say uh, using system which will add a using or you can select uh, system.console which will make it the fully qualified name so let's do that one first and let's do the other. Okay, oh, that's what I want. The open and close curly braces uh, enclose segments of code. Everything inside these braces uh, is inside the hello world namespace. If you can see the, the cursor, uh, when I move it to a brace, it, it highlights the closing brace as well. Uh, everything inside these braces is inside the program class, and everything inside these braces is inside our main method. So we talked about using statements and namespaces and a little bit about classes. All code has to exist inside a class. So we have our program class, which Visual Studio created for us. Inside program, we have a main method. And uh, the main method is a special method, which is called when the application first starts. Uh, as the entry point to our application, main must be static, uh, meaning it can be called directly on the program class, much like when we call right line on the console class, um, we do so without creating an instance, and we'll, we'll talk about instances uh, very soon. So main has to be static, and the next part of uh, this um, declaration of our, our method is uh, the return type. Uh, in this case, it's void. Uh, void means that the method does not return a value. Uh, main, again, as the entry point of our application, can also return an int, int, which is an integer or more specifically a whole number value um, 32 bits in length. So we could do this. Um, if we do so, we get an error which says that we have to return a value. So maybe we return a value. And our error goes away and this runs as well. So if you do this and change void to int, you can return some values uh, back to scripts or, or batch files which can use the return value uh, usually to determine if a console application executed successfully or not. So I'm going to uh, change this back to void. Now again in our method declaration uh, when we list parameters, we, we do so inside of um, uh, parentheses. For main, our parameters are optional. We don't have to accept them. Uh, so in this case, it would be um, just this method takes no parameters. But the default code for, for how this is generated does take parameters. Inside the parens, we have string, open and close bracket, space, and args, uh, which is short for arguments. What's inside these parens are the parameters the method accepts. Here it's saying the main method accepts an array of strings as input. A string is a type, meaning uh, text or literally a string of characters. The brackets after the type indicate it's an array, which we'll talk about later, but for now it means uh, many strings can be passed into the method inside of the one parameter. And args is the name of our parameter, which we can use inside the method. So now that we know what args is, uh, let's use it real quick. So change hello world to hello space double quote. I'm going to add another space plus sign 
and args zero. Uh, or args open bracket zero close bracket. I'm going to explain arrays in more detail later, but for now, args as a whole is an array of strings, meaning it could contain zero, one, or many strings, or even be null, which is sort of a special case, which we'll get to in a bit. So args by itself is potentially many strings, and args zero represents the string which is at position zero, or in other words, the first position. Uh, all position counting in C-sharp starts at zero for the first element, and then one for the second element, and, and so on. So we're using the plus sign to concatenate our string hello to the value of args zero, which is also a string. So we can make our program say hello to someone specific. Uh, let's run it and see what happens. So we got an exception, and that's actually expected because we haven't told Visual Studio to pass anything to args. So let's close this. and tell Visual Studio to send some arguments. Uh, go ahead and double click on properties and go to debug and enter something into the command line arguments uh, developer. Now let's go back and let's run it again. Okay, much better. So let's look at how this would work on the command line. Drop down to the command line by pressing Windows R and typing CMD. And browse to your projects folder, which will be something similar to what I have on screen. And type DIR. Ah, well, in C Sharp Express, you have to explicitly save the project before it ends up in your projects folder, so let's go ahead and save it. Okay, save all, and here's our folder. Save. Okay, let's go back. Alright, and there it is. So, we're going to be looking for, uh, well, first we're going to go inside our folder and we're going to be looking under bin and we're going to be looking either for the debug or the release folder. Uh, if you're using the full version of Visual Studio it's likely going to be the debug folder. If you're using Express it's going to depend if you hit Control F5 or F5 last time to build your project. Uh, if you hit Control F5 then the most recent version will be in the release folder. If you hit F5, the most recent version will be in the debug folder. It's a little bit silly in my opinion. So I know I hit Control F5, so I'm going to go into release. And also my uh, command prompt is getting huge, so I'm going to get rid of the directory on that. So once you get the correct folder, run hello world. And we get an exception. Um, so it's the same kind of thing that we saw. No, I don't want to debug. Same kind of thing that we saw in Visual Studio when we didn't pass any arguments. So uh, let's run Hello World again. And to do that, I just hit the up arrow key. And space, and I don't know, your first name, Alan or Judd. And enter. Alright, great, it works. Uh, now, what if I run it with my last name? So I'll add white. So I still get just my first name. This is because of the space, and my last name is now sitting in args1. Uh, so Judd goes to args0, and White goes to args1. Um, and args1 is getting unused by our program. Uh, I can fix this uh, either by writing some more code, or I can fix this right on the command line by enclosing my first parameter inside double quotes. And let's run it again. Okay, that worked. So now back to our code. So now we understand everything that's going on inside the program.cs file. We have our usings, which are hints for the compiler and how to resolve a type. We have our namespace, hello world, which contains our class program. And we have our method main, which is inside of our program class. And then inside the curly braces, uh, it kind of defines the, the boundaries of everything. 
So that does it for this video. In the next video, I'll cover variables, data types, uh, receiving user input, and some more debugging tools that are available in Visual Studio. Thanks for watching.